Hi, welcome to Jade Kind Gaming. My name is Adam. Uh, today I'm going to be opening up just a few packs, a few different kinds of packs, of the Magic the Gathering Throne of Eldraine um, set. Just came out. Uh, I'm really excited about this probably since Innistrad. This is the set that I've been most excited about. And, um, and I loved Innistrad for the, the world flavor. And this one is... Fairy Tale meets Camelot. Uh, it's fantastic. Um, and also with it, they did a few different kinds of packs. They, of course, have their normal booster packs. 15 cards, you get a rare or a mythic rare, 3 uncommons, uh, what is that, uh, 9, no, 10 commons, and then a land. Um, and then you get your token. Same they've always done. I guess technically they've now dubbed them draft boosters, but... So they have those, and I got like 5 of those all open up. Um... And those are the normal three to five dollar whatever your normal magic card been doing, and uh, I, I've not noticed it, but apparently for a few sets now they've been trying out and they've now adapted to this is a normal thing. They have a, a theme booster. I got a blue theme booster, but for this set they have one of each color um, that comes with uh, thirty five cards. Uh, it says one point one rare or, and, or mythic rare, being that one out of ten will have two and the other. Nine will have one, and then so 34 to 35 commons or uncommons, not a specific number, uh, but more commons than uncommons. And they're all within the theme, so blue means they are all blue, which I heard of, and I'm like, that sounds awesome. You and a buddy could both get one, add 25 basic lands, blind shuffle them together, and just go at it. No idea what's in your deck, but you have a 60-card deck that will function, because if they're all blue, I can just put uh, 25 islands in it, with it, and I got a, I got a unplanned deck. So I thought that was a pretty cool idea. Um, yeah, so I'll take a look at that other sort of booster. And then here's the one, this is the one of interest, and I'll do this one last. This is the collector booster. This is the new one. This is the 30 to $35 booster pack which is stupid. Uh, I decided to get a, a box, a booster box, and they were promoting this by doing, you know, if you got it, like, pre-ordered or whatever, you'd get one of these uh, free with buying a booster box. I did that because I didn't want to spend 35, 30 to $35 on a single booster. That's silly. That's ridiculous. Um, but it has a rare or mythic rare with extended art. It has a rare or mythic rare foil, it has nine commons or uncommons that are foil, uh, three special frame cards, which are showcase cards, which are like a fancy way of doing the special cards in this set, uh, or borderless planeswalkers. Fingers crossed for borderless planeswalker. Uh, one ancillary card, which is either you know one of the cards from something else, whether it's the buy a box promo card, whether it's the uh, one, some of the, one of the cards from, like, the Brawl decks or the Planeswalker decks that aren't... Uh, basically cards that aren't available in normal boosters. You get one of those, and then you get a foil token, which there's no other way to get. Um, so Nifty, probably not worth the price point, but Nifty... Um, anyway, so that's kind of what I'm opening up here. Uh, and we'll just I'm just going to start with... I got five of the normal... Boosters, let's just do that to get a look at the set. What the, like I said, I love the flavor of the set. So let's take a look at, uh, at that with uh, starting with one of these. So you got, you know, standard, normal booster, like always. Well, maybe not like always, because the token's in the front here. That's unusual. I'm very used to the token being in the back, behind everything. Um, and there's the island. There's our land. These are all backwards. Okay, so starting with our rear. Okay, so they're just facing the other way. Um, yeah, let me just adjust here. So I got a murderous rider, a uh, zombie knight, that has an adventure. So for... This cost here, you can play an instant, destroy target creature or planeswalker you lose to life, and then this goes into exile, and you can then play it for its creature cost to put out the, uh, 
you know, the creature, which apparently goes back to the library when it goes away. So it, this can keep coming around. Um, but yeah, sort of between Camelot and Fairy Tales, there's lots of adventures. So they have, this is the special type of card in the set. Uh, spinning wheel, all right. Um, so the long forgotten, the wheel continued to turn, spinning fate from a dusty attic. You can get some mana there. Epic Downfall. Sorcery. Exile target creature with converted mana cost of three or greater. Okay, so this is a cheap cost to get rid of something big. The dragon had a lot of things going through its mind that day. He didn't expect a sword to be one of them. Uh, rally for the Throne. Uh... Create two one one white human creature tokens, uh, and if it at least three white mana was spent, so if, if you spend all white mana to cast a spell, you gain one life for each creature you control. Let's see here. There we go. That's a little easier to read. <laughs> it's like what's <laughs> this seems bright. Uh, if at least three white mana was spent to cast this spell, you gain one life for each creature you control. Yet forever young, those who say you only live once have never been touched by the cauldron of eternity. You got these old hands, so like fairy tale with the old lady stealing youth or whatever. Charmed sleep, which is the like sleeping beauty, or obviously putting a dragon asleep there. Lockthwain Paladin, which is a knight. I will find the king if I have to ride from summer to winter and back again. Um, but that very much looks like in the Camelot theme. Lockwain Gargoyle, which I guess is probably one of the the courts, you know. It's probably Lockwain. Uh, curious pair. You have these couple looking through this window. Uh, treats to share. Create a food token, which can be uh, used to uh, gain life, I believe. It's gingerbread, like Mother makes. What is there to be afraid of? Oh, Hansel, Gretel, poor children. Seven dwarves. All right, so seven dwarves get uh, plus one, plus one for each other creature named seven dwarves in your in your control, and a deck can have up to seven cards named seven dwarves. So you can have extra of these. Uh, <laughs> uh, the gleam of rubies and my brothers and sisters by my side. What more could I want? Rognald the third. Yeah, so Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. Gardenbrig Paladin, another of the Camelot theme, I'm sure. Fairy Guide Mother. Uh, no one is so lost that a fairy can't find them. It's like your fairy godmother. Eye Collector is a fairy. Ugh. Uh, and Mantle of Tides, um, which is a blue artifact equipment. Plus one, plus two. Whenever you draw your second card each turn, attach this to a creature you control or equipped for three. So if you draw more than one card, you can do that. So that's, that's pack one. Going into pack two here. Feels no fun. There's not a token on either side of this one. It's just promoting their their silly digital version of the game. I collect cards. I don't want digital cards. <laughs> Forest. Okay, I got a uh, foil hypnotic sprite. Two one with flying and can uh, go on an adventure to counter target spell. It's uncommon. My rare is the Fabled Passage. It's a land. Tap and sacrifice it. Search your library for a basic land card. Put it into the battlefield tapped. Then shuffle your library. Then, if you control four or more lands, untap that land. Okay. 
And from here, the path to anywhere may be found. Um, thunderous snapper. While humans hear only the deafening roar, the fae hear music of a breathtaking beauty. Giant opportunity. They look tasty, but best to plant them. Okay, so... Three mana. You may sacrifice two food. So there's food tokens in this. You can sacrifice two. Uh, if you do, create a 7-7 seven, seven green giant uh, creature token. Otherwise, create three food tokens. So you can either get more food, or you can, if you have enough, uh... Yeah, so either you can get three food, or you can get rid of some food and... Oh my, because it's, it's obviously Jack of the Beanstalk, but it's either he's trading the food and able to reach the giant, or he's just, you know, getting food like he's supposed to. Uh, mysterious Pathfinder. For good or ill, most Fae can't resist meddling in the adventures of any knight they meet. Each creature you control that has an adventure enters the battlefield with an additional plus one plus one counter on it, whether it's gone on the adventure or not. Uh, right, we get our Mystic Sanctuary, which is an island, but not a basic land. So it's a non-basic island with special stuff. Reeve Soul, Rimrock Knight, Signpost Scarecrow, Return to Nature, so that's long after the magic wore off, the mice still dreamed of glorious galloping, so it's aww. Cinderella, and it's it's uh, at the end of <laughs> all things. The Arden Vale Paladin, another of the Paladins there. Blow your house down. You think these walls will protect you? My, you have a dim view of the power of the wilds. Up to three target creatures can't walk this turn. Destroy any of them that are walls. I'll huff, and I'll pluff, and I'll blow your house down. So tiny. Uh, his sword sounded like a silver chime on the glass jaw. And the sprite laughed with delight. Beloved princess, sometimes a gentle slipper can travel where an armored boot's been denied. So, a 1-1 one, one life wink can't be blocked by creatures with power 3 or greater. And if you look at the art here, there's like trolls and evil things all around her. Uh, it's hard to see on the little bitty card, but they showed it off. I'm just enjoying looking at the cool stuff in the set. We haven't even gotten to the fancy cards yet. So I get a knight. Swamp. Ventress Gargoyle. For two. Flying. It can't attack unless defending player has seven or more cards in their graveyard. It can't block unless you have four or more cards in hand. And tap it, each player puts the top card from their library into their graveyard. Edgewall Innkeeper. Human Peasant, whenever you cast a creature spell that has an adventure, draw a card. Won't safety, a fully stocked larder, you'll find nothing like Edgewall Keep in the wilds. I promise you that. Mystical Dispute. Uh, this spell costs two less to cast if it targets a blue spell, and counter target spell unless it's controller phase three. Poor lost mage, your feet are on land, yet you're in over your head, aren't you? Mad Ratter, gather round and tell me all from the courts and the castles. So it's like, um, whatever. The guy leading the rats. <laughs> Red Cap Raiders. Foreboding Fruit. So some sort of cursed bit of fruit there. Flutter Fox. Insatiable appetite. He ate them out of house and home, and shed and barn and flock and herd. Crash and drawbridge. From the Camelot theme. Another seven dwarfs. I need several more of those. Godrig Carver. Another eye collector. A witching well. It was built by the witch of Lochmere. Most of the wishes it grants 
are its own shining armor. So, I guess the Camelot theme. We got one arm. Fourth of the standard packs. So, it'd be five. So, it'd be five. So, I got a human warrior. Forest. Oath Sworn Knight. It's three. It enters the battlefield with four plus one plus one counters on it. It attacks each combat of Fable, and if damage would be dealt to it while it has a plus one plus one counter on it, prevent that damage and remove a plus one plus one counter from it. Okay. Legendary creature, Seer Korad the Grim. Whenever another creature dies or a creature card is put into your a graveyard from anywhere other than the battlefield, or a creature card leaves your graveyard, it deals one damage to each opponent and Pay two, each player puts the top card of their library into their graveyard. Mm. Glass casket. Fate will decide whether it's a bed or a tomb. Covetous urge. Trapped in the tower. At least up here I have some peace and quiet. Rapunzel, Rapunzel. Reaper of Night, Brimstone Trebuchet, Rimrock Knight again, Fell the Pheasant, like a pheasant hunt, Searing Barrage, it emerged from the coldest depths of Lochmere, only to face the fires of Iron Craig. Ginger Brute, alright, this is great. It's a food golem. Has haste. It's a 1-1. One, one. Ginger Brute can't be blocked this turn except by creatures with haste. And pay 2 and tap, sacrifice it, you gain 3 life. So basically, the same thing a food token would do. Uh, the unlabeled vial was not vanilla extract after all. Can't catch me, I'm the gingerbread man. Wishful merfolk. She yearned to walk on dry lands so she might take her vengeance there. It's kind of a dark twist on The Little Mermaid, but... Okay, Ariel. Another Shining Army. Um, and a Memory Theft. And one last... One last, uh... Normal pack. So we get a token on an adventure. After an adventure resolves, you can place the exiled card here. You may cast the creature from exile. So this is like a spot that you can like place off on the side to remember these are the cards in exile that you can replay. Planes. Oh yay! I was so this is one I was hoping for. Love struck beast. It's three. Beast noble. And, and admittedly, I don't. I wasn't like oh I want this because this is a good card. I, I have a deck for no. This is awesome for the flavor. So beast noble. Heart's desire. It's adventure. Create a one one white human creature token. And then it can come back. Love struck beast. Love struck beast can't attack unless you control a 1 1 creature. His mind chose solitude, but his heart disagreed. It's Beauty and the Beast. It's Belle and Beast. It's fantastic. I love it. It makes me so happy. I love the fairy tale theme in this set. It is so, so fun for me. Um, another legendary creature. Uh, Equal to the num uh, power, and tough power is equal to the number of cards in your hand, and it enters the battlefield, draw a card, and spells your opponent's cast that target it, costs two more to cast. Wintermoor Commander, Death Touch. Its toughness equals the number of knights you control, and whenever it attacks, another target knight you control gains indestructible until the end of turn. Into the story. This spell costs three less to cast if an opponent has seven or more cards in their graveyard, and then draw four cards. Uh, the boundary between real and imaginary is as thin as the page, and just as easily torn. So it's like walking into a storybook. Uh, unexplained vision. Another forever young. Reef soul. Another curious pair. Thrill of possibility. Gingerbread Cabin. It's a land, it's a forest, you tap it, that green of course, and then it enters the battlefield tapped unless you control three or more other forests, and then when it enters the battlefield untapped, uh, 
create a food token. So if it's early in the game and you just need an extra forest, it's a forest. Um, but if it, you, it, you get it later in the game, it's beneficial because it also gives you something extra. So, opt. Sometimes the hottest choices between two wonders. Silver frame ritual. Put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control. And if at least three uh, white mana were spent on this, uh, creatures you control gain vigilance until end of term. Turn. Uh, tempered by fire and united by virtue, the knights of Avondale, uh, Ar Arden Vale fight with a single unbreakable will. So it's like knights of the round table. Tall as a beanstalk. Enchanted creature gets plus three, plus three, has reach, and is a giant in addition to its other types. He realized a bit late that he was supposed to plant the magic beans. Oh my. <laughs> he ate the beans. Whoops. <laughs> so t Another so tiny. And so that's that's just five of the normal Throne of Eldraine boosters to get kind of a feel for what this set is. Um, and I'm loving it. The, the Camelot stuff is cool, and it adds a lot of as far as it being a good set and, and fitting a lot of the needs, it does that with that. Um, but the fairy tale stuff is what uh, makes me so happy. Um, so now, let's do the theme booster. I got a blue theme booster. Let's see. That's 35 cards in a booster. Let's see how that's going to turn out. And so, you know, blue theme booster. And um, choose your color blue. Enhance your blue deck with 35 cards from Throne of Eldraine, including at least one rare mythic rare card. And I didn't know this until I bought it, but I thought of this before. I had 25 lands to start building a 60-card deck. It even tells you, you know, nice, simple, like, it even suggests that, like, I don't know, the bottom. Like, I was thinking that when I just saw 35 cards that are all a single color, you could make a deck from that. But then I like Pack Wars, which is the idea of you take just a normal booster, add two of each basic land, and, uh... You know, battle a mini deck with that. Alright, so inside it has this weird sleeve that shows it's blue. And it's this kind of pack. Oh, yeah. It also had like a reference card in the back, so, you know, on your turn reference. So it has that too. Anyway, so, so tiny. Uh, and this is actually the reason I got blue is because I, I wanted to make sure that I got this one and I thought it would increase my odds. I don't particularly know what this is from. Virtue is virtue, whatever the heart uh, that nurtures it. Um, for two, choose two target creatures controlled by different players, return those creatures to their owner's hands. I don't specifically know like what fairy tale this is or what exactly, but it's so cute. It's so sweet. Just the idea that <laughs> this unlikely pair is running away together. <laughs> um, Ventress Paladin. Uh, so we get uh, these are both in the comments of right, so I count how many have each. Uh, Sire uh, Elion Order again. Another unexplained vision. Scalding Cauldron, so it's colorless, so three tap uh, and sacrifice it. It deals three damage to target creature. Uh, it's a witch's trick. The cauldron, full of pain, I wouldn't dump it on any but the wicked. Um, so it's just completely a colorless, but it obviously will work in a blue deck, so it got in here. Enchanted Carriage. Um, so it is, you know, a vehicle, but it's the... Uh, Cinderella's carriage, and when you, it enters the battlefield, create two one-one white mouse creature tokens, and accrue it by two. Um, didn't say please. Overwhelmed apprentice. When it enters the battlefield, each opponent puts the top two cards of their library into their graveyard. Then you scry two. Um, I don't. I don't really know if it's supposed to be, but overwhelmed apprentice. Just the name. Sounds like um, uh, Mickey, Sorcerer's Apprentice, and so that situation he was in. <laughs> um, Moonlit Scavengers, Animating Fairy, so 
Uh, target non-creature artifact you control becomes a 0-0 zero, zero artifact and you put 4 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it. A true puppet master has no need for strings. So, it's the blue fairy. It's, you know, from Pinocchio. Uh, corridor monitor. Another wishful mer uh, merfolk. Another corridor monitor. Mistfold river turtle. Frogify. Enchant creature. Loses all abilities and is a blue fog creature with uh, base power and toughness 1-1. One, one. Um, that gnat was still hovering by the venison and now both look delicious. Turning the whatever the king into a frog. Golden egg, so goose that laid the golden egg. Uh, witching well again. Another adventurous paladin. A queen of ice. A inquisitive puppet, so Pinocchio himself. The strings were gone, but he still felt the pull of invisible forces tugging at his mind. And there's the battlefield scry one. And exile it, create a 1 1 white human creature token. So it's a 0 2 that you can exile, and he can become a real boy. Another Mistfold River Turtle. Unexplained Vision. Steel Gaze Griffin. Heraldric Banner. Uh, choose a color when it enters. Creatures you control of the chosen color get plus one, plus zero, and tap one, add one mana of the chosen color. This would be a great one in any of these color-based decks, because you choose blue, and it's a, it's a good one for this deck. <laughs> uh, Tome Raider, oh, the one for the art from the cover of this here. Uh, flying, when it enters the battlefield, draw a card, and humans are so forgetful. Every page I steal becomes a secret they can't remember. Tome. Not tomb, tome, book, book raider. Oh, wow, okay. <laughs> Duh, okay. Uh, mantle of tides. Uh, turn into a pumpkin. Turn target non land permanent to its owner's hand, draw a card, and if at least three blue mana were spent to cast the spell, create a food token. Ooh, another runaway together. Uh, Mystic Sanctuary. Island there. Uh, human Knight Jousting Dummy, another colorless there. Don't let it fool you. Many of us got our first scars from Sire Nobody. A Charm Sleep. A Merfolk Secret Keeper. Merfolk Curiosity usually has dire consequences, but rarely for the Merfolk. And Ventress Gargoyle. We already got that, so. Okay, so we get our rare, and of the 34 other cards, eight of them were uncommon, the rest were common. So, that's sort of the breakdown that I ended up with there. Finally! Let's take a look at our incredibly overpriced collector booster and see what we got. So, 15 card collector booster. Let me make carefully because <laughs> this is expensive. I want the wrapper too. Why? I don't know. But it's what my brain says. Let's start here. So we get foil co uh, common, seven dwarves, mantle of the tides, uh, roving keep, out muscle, youthful knight in the wild. Your true training will begin. Okay, uh, we get. Uh, Silver Flame Squire as a foil common, but it's one of the ones with the uh, showcase frames. Because this is the, you know, for the adventures, uh, you've seen them before, but you see all, all the fancy, fancy looking stuff, all the scroll work and everything. So this is one of the showcase frames, and it's in foil as well, so that's cool that that, that exists. 
Uh, target creature gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. Untap it. And beacons along the borderlands are hit at any incursion from the wilds. All right. And so, uh, after that, we get fling. Another common. Uh, giants believe that tossing red caps at knights is the best way to deal with both. Okay, so red cap caps being more of a fairy tale version of goblin. Okay. Ooh, an uncommon with the special frame. That's all thing, and they also—I mean, I don't know if you noticed—like the art is different. Like it's not just the frame, but the art in the center is—it looks like a storybook art instead of. <laughs> so this one is a shepherd of the flock, uh, usher to safety, return target permanent you control to its owner's hand. Not all heroes carry swords. We got Mystical Dispute in Foil, so second uncommon. Is that online? So that was online of the common or uncommon foil. So now we would be on to the three special frame. So like the, which are our showcase, so like now we have Order of Midnight here. And Rose Thorn Accolade. Of druid old battlefields make great gardens so rich from the blood of the fallen. Right. And a queen of ice. Okay, we saw her earlier with, of course, the normal one. So here is the uh, the special frame for her. So what's next? Uh, this would be the ancillary card, I believe. Um, Yeah, I think that's above the card number because there's 269 cards. This is a 331. So this is the ancillary card. This is from either one of the Brawl decks or the Planeswalker deck or whatever. Uh, so I got one of those cards. Okay. Uh, this is going to be... This is our... Ooh, a Mythic. Um, with extended art. So this is our... Myth rare Mythic, so I got a Mythic with extended art, and I got Ember Cleave, a legendary artifact, equipment, flash, this spell costs one less to cast for each attacking creature you control, when it enters the battlefield, attach it to target creature you control, and the equipped creature gets plus one, plus one, and has a double strike and trample, and then it can be equipped again later for three. So, legendary artifact, Mythic with extended art. Our rare that is foil is Castle Arvindale. Um, enters the battlefield tapped unless you control planes. Tap to add a, add a white, and then you can pay and tap to create a 1-1 one, one white human creature token. So later in the game when you just have too much mana and nothing to do with it, you can at least put little guys out. Without Arvindale's loyalty, the realm would greedily devour itself. And then our foil token... Uh, is a boar creature token, <laughs> which you turn into food. And then on the tokens in these, it looks like you get a foil on both sides, and I got a food for the back of it, so. Uh, so I have f Oh, and that's actually really good. Maybe it's because boar becomes food, so you can just flip it over. Very cool. But yeah. So, um, cool. Uh, I was glad I got, you know, the extended art was a mythic. That was really neat. Um, I got a couple of the foils that I got were, um, were the special frame, the whatever, the showcase frame, and that was really neat. Um, I would have loved to have gotten a borderless planeswalker here. Um, but still... Uh, some cool cards. Cool to have a bunch of foils. Cool for a collect. I like to collect, and it's very cool for that. Not thirty to thirty-five dollars cool. You know, if a normal booster is like three to five dollars, I would say this is. Uh, and if that fa that big booster was five to nine dollars, I'd say this maybe ten. 
maybe 15, but probably more like 10 would be around the value of, of something like this. Um, but yeah, not really, not, not 30 to 35 dollars. Uh, again, this is the first time they've done a collector booster. So maybe in future sets that will adjust and uh, they'll figure things out. Um, because, yeah, it's not really, not worth, at least not to me. Uh, and I do, I like to collect. One of the things I like to do with the cards is to actually collect them. That is part of what is the fun for me. Um, but that's, that's expensive for what that is. Um, Probably the difference between making it that and making it the other is if instead of maybe the three uh, special frames being either Showcase or Borderless Planeswalker, what if they split that to two Showcase cards and one Borderless Planeswalker in every pack? So every collector's booster gets you a Planeswalker, one of the Borderless specialty ones, or something like that. You know, They'd have to increase it by something a little more, because as is, not worth it. Cool. Uh, and it was cool to get it with my buy a box uh, you know, as a promotion for it, and, you know, that it came with that to check it out, and it was, you know, I'm glad I get to show you, uh, and give you my opinion. Um, uh, now, the set itself, awesome. Get boosters, get a box, do, you know, whatever. Uh, heck, if you got a buddy, get, each of you get your own theme booster and just battle blind with the theme booster. I might end up getting a couple more of these and battling with a buddy, doing that myself. because uh, that seems like a lot of fun. Get the cards. The set is awesome. I love Throne of Eldrain is a v amazingly cool theme. The the Camelot stuff, you know, ties it together and gives you some good combat mechanics and such. And you have all these beautiful and thoughtful fairy tale cards. They're fun. It is a really fun and creative set. I love the world. Um my thought is, gee, I wish we had got a, you know, we had the, whatever, Guildmaster's Guide to Ravnica for D&D. &D. I was like, gee, I wish we had a Eldraine D&D &D book. I would love to, you know, have this be part of a D&D &D setting or things like that. Because um, the setting is really cool. Check it out. If you're really interested, maybe check out a pack of the Collector Booster, but... Probably not worth it. <laughs> Regular boosters totally are. <laughs> uh, but yeah, thank you for watching. Uh, like, comment, subscribe. If you got a collector's booster and got uh, any of the borderless planeswalkers or something like super cool, let me know what you got. Uh, if you disagree and think that for some reason it is worth the $30 to $35 price tag, let me know why. Uh, yeah. Otherwise, thank you for watching and have a good day.